Okay. This is going quite well, actually. Well, I shouldn't jinx it, though. Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Showware Reviews, with me Showware, where I pay for mobile games and check them out so you don't have to. Today we're going to take a look at uh, Elven Rivers, The Forgotten Lands, and review it based on playability, microtransactions, length, design, and finally how fun it actually is. More on that in a bit. Elven Rivers is a puzzle game with scavenging elements where you need to pick up the resources, clear obstacles, rescue other people, all in order to clear the level. Um. Yeah, we can harvest this food over here. We can probably destroy that. Yeah. Okay, let's pick that up. Then we're gonna pick up that. Then we're gonna pick up that. That and that. You can choose how difficult the game is with easy, medium and hard difficulties. You meet new characters, get more and more complex puzzles as you progress. So. What do we have here? Okay. You can change the difficulty at the start of any level or on your profile page. True challenge, experience players familiar with, with the genre. Take a time to enjoy the game, there's no need to hurry. Playability. This is where we rate the game based on how much you can play the game without the game constantly telling you what to do. The game has a hit system that you can turn off as you see fit, and a level progression system, but it is kind of linear. Kind of has kind of cross vibes to it. It has different levels in it, but not that diverse. The replay value is not that spectacular, only there to make you tempted to go, to go back to the level, get three stars for each level, but that's basically about it. The game is a perfect example of being good, but not able to get spectacular. So for those reasons, I'm going to give it a solid 3. Zero microtransactions. This is where we take, take a look at the in-game store and or ads giving the price of the game. This game costed me 4 euros and 16 cents, and so far I've not been able to see any ad or any kind of microtransactions. Which is a good thing. And there's not much I can add to that, so it gets, us, it gets an automatic 5. I don't have anything more to add to that. Length. This is where we take a look at how long the game appears to be and how much replayability you can get out of the game. This is one of those games that has hundreds of levels. And that does it. Okay then. And we got 3 stars again. Awesome. Awesome. How big is this one? Holy. I mean. That's quite big. And can get you hooked, uh, hooked on it for a long period of time. Kind of like Candy Cross in that sense. But seems to be endless. This might be a good thing if they keep adding in more and more challenges and puzzle types in the game. But it's only so much you can play the same thing over and over again before you get bored. In terms of replayability, it's close to zero because the only reason you get back to a previous level is to try and get three stars on it. There's no benefit for clearing the levels on easy, medium or hard, it's just basically more grind. So for that reason, I'll give it a three. Design. This is where we take a look at the design of the game, art, user interface, music and sound effects. The music in this game is quite nice and really good as a background music, but there's not much uh, in terms of different music depending on what you're doing. It's kind of just the same music going through all over, except for a few bits and pieces here and there that changes, especially when you clear a level. The level design is beautiful though, and the art does look nice, even though it's quite simplistic. So, a solid three. It's not much that I can add to this, really. It's it's there. It's not the worst one out there, but it's also not the best the best one out there. So, yeah, solid three. 
And now grab that and grab that. Okay, so I mean it's quite simplistic in, in its design and all of that, but still kind of works. I mean, I won't complain. <laughs> but this is where we take a look at the, how much fun the game actually is. The game is a great time waster with it being simplistic in design and short levels, but it kind of lacks it in it uh, drawing you in, unless you absolutely love these kind of games. And you're probably gonna guess it. But I'm going to give it a solid 3. Overall score. In total, these games get a 17 out of 25 points available, averaging out at 3.5 stars. This game is nice and all, but the fact that it costs uh, over 4 euros, making it one of the more expensive ones we have done so far, and it also being just kind of a mediocre game, I'm sorry, but there are better games and cheaper ones out there that are more worthy of your purchase. But then again, this is just my opinion. Feel free to have your own. I'll leave them in the comments down below. So that's it for this review. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you want to be nice to my editor, you should hit that like button. And even subscribe. Because even though I don't care, my editor does. I'll see you later. Take care and bye-bye. Design. This is where we take a look at the, the design of the game, art, user interface, user interface. <laughs> Nothing really happens here in the Elven Land. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't read. Nothing really happens here in the Elven Lands, as I've come to learn in my years as a scout. The elves lead to their quiet, harmonious lives, and the nature spirits slumber peacefully. I don't think we even make weapons anymore. Our ships are either for trading or exploring. Everything's, everything moves slowly here. People and animals. Hey!